There's already thread on my pants. Yeah, okay. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you my favorite all-purpose sewing knot. This is the knot that I call the Cirque du Soleil French knot, which does not make any sense unless you know how to make a French knot in embroidery, but I promise you, it's very funny. So the Cirque du Soleil French knot is super useful anytime you're doing any kind of hand stitching and you need there to be a knot at the end of your thread so that when you pull your needle through the fabric, the knot keeps your thread from just pulling all the way through. What you're gonna need for your Cirque du Soleil French knot is a needle and some thread. I'm using just a Coates and Clark all-purpose polyester thread. And I'm going to find the end of my thread. Here it is. And I'm gonna make sure that the tip is nice and clean before I try to thread my needle. Because if it's fraying, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. So, I'm gonna cut it with my scissors. And that's usually enough to ensure that it will get all the way through the eye of the needle. Um, but it, you can always wet it with your tongue if it's being really unruly. So I'm gonna get my thumb and forefinger of my right hand very, very close. See how close it is? So close. That is gonna be very helpful to steer it into the eye of the needle. Pull it out. And I'm gonna fold my thread all the way in half and I'm gonna bring the ends together so they're both at the bottom here. So then I'm gonna just let grab the needle with the thumb and forefinger of my right hand and I'm gonna let the threads like hang down. So they're just like hanging out. So, thumb and forefinger of my right hand, hanging onto my needle. My left hand is going to draw all the way down the threads until I reach my two tails. Then I'm going to bring that thread up, flip it over, and cross it in front of my needle, Boop, like that. So I'm gonna grab where they're crossing with the thumb and forefinger of my right hand so that it's hanging onto that thread. And then I'm going to draw my thumbs away from each other. So it's very important that I'm drawing it back along the thread. Like if I were to keep following that thread all the way around, it would come back up to the eye of my needle. Uh, as opposed to trying to do this with the tails of the thread, because that's not going to work. It's going to be very frustrating. So I'm here. I'm going to draw my thumbs apart. Then I'm going to wrap that thread around the tip of my needle, you know, three, four times. The more times I wrap it around the tip of my needle, the larger my knot will be. So if I have really large thread or like a particularly large eye of my needle, um, I can do it more times to create a larger knot. Okay, so those loops, that's gonna be our knot. It's gonna be very exciting. Um, so it is now my job, the job of the thumb and forefinger of my right hand, to hold those loops as loops. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull them down using just the thread that my left hand is holding so that they're between the thumb and forefinger of my right hand. And I'm gonna, keep my thumb and forefinger right on top of those loops. I also, pro tip, like to keep the fingers of my right hand like inside the loop. It just keeps it from getting tangled while I'm pulling it through. I'm gonna let go with my left hand. I'm gonna grab the tip of my needle and I'm going to pull the needle through those loops. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get the eye of the needle through the loops without them collapsing. I'm gonna keep pulling, I'm gonna keep pulling, check it out. Keep pulling, and it's just going to collapse into a nice little knot. What? And if you've got kind of unruly tails here, you can always be super sneaky, and boop. Now they're perfect. They were always perfect, weren't they? Yes, they were. All right, so that is the Cirque du Soleil French Knot. Okay, I should probably also mention that the Cirque du Soleil French Knot, that is not its actual name. I definitely named it that because I do think I'm very funny. I don't actually know what this knot is called. If anybody has like a technical name for this, like please feel free to put it in the comments. Um, I learned it just in the due course of my sewing experience as just like a basic sewing knot. So I use the Cirque du Soleil French Knot for almost everything. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with embroidery floss because it's just a little bit different. So this is an embroidery needle. It differs from the other hand sewing needle because of the eye. See, it has like a much larger but much taller eye. That's so that your embroidery floss, which is made up of lots of little tiny threads, can fit through that eye and it's tall so that it's not wide. Because if it was wide, it wouldn't wanna go through your fabric or it would cause a really big hole in your fabric and you don't want that. So again, the first thing I'm gonna do with my embroidery floss is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna get like a nice oop, clean, see how nice and flat and clean that is? And I almost always, for embroidery floss, do go ahead and get it wet just with my 
with my tongue or with my like front teeth and my and my bottom lip again so that they stick together and they're super flat gonna get my thumb my thumb and forefinger very very close and then sort of just like smoosh it in there so that it's flat and it's going through the eye of the needle it doesn't want to go very far but I'm gonna grab it on the other side and pull it out oops looks like I missed so let's try again sometimes I'll get it wet first <laughs> Okay, so then it's wet first, and now I'm gonna clip it. Oh yeah, it's very pretty. Let's see if that works. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. Not gonna lie, kinda awkward doing this with like a camera between me and my thread. So if you are having problems threading your needle, oh, there we go. If you're having problems threading your needle, you can get a bigger needle. You can also, see how this has lots of different threads? You can cut them down or um, split them, you can split your threads so that you're only using two or three and that is significantly easier to thread. So that's one of the main differences between sewing thread and embroidery floss. And the next biggest detail is that when I fold it, I'm not gonna fold it over so that the bottoms are even. I'm gonna fold it over so that I've got a couple of inches between the end of the fold over thread and the edge of the actual thread. And that's because with embroidery, we're gonna be sewing, drawing with this single line here, as opposed to with two lines, which is what you usually do for hand sewing. So again, we're folding it over not all the way. So we've got plenty down here. So I'm ready to do my knot, here I go. Eye to the floor, tip to the sky. My left hand is going to draw all the way down and I'm gonna pass where that first one ends and I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. Whoops, lost it. All the way to the bottom. Flip it up and over cross in front, grab onto it, loop it a couple of times. And this is where I don't wanna get super tight here because I know that not only do I have a bigger eye of my needle, but I also have a ton of thread. And that thread is gonna be even like thicker than the eye of the needle and harder to get through. So I'm gonna be a little loosey-goosey about that. Maybe not that loosey-goosey, right? A little loose and hanging onto those threads so that I can hopefully get the eye of my needle through those loops. I'm gonna grab it. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. Sometimes it's all like, okay, calm down, here we go. Okay, great. So I'm hanging onto the loops, I'm pulling the thread. There I let, oh, I lost my first half, which is fine. Keep going, and there we are. There's my nice little embroidery knot there at the bottom. Boop. A couple of pro tips about length of thread. So you can make a decision about how long you want your sewing thread to be according to your personal needs. There are advantages and disadvantages to choosing different lengths of threads. So on the one hand, you can have a super long length of thread, which means that you're going to have to re-thread your needle less frequently. Um, but on the other hand, it is more likely to get tangled while you're doing this knot, but also while you're sewing. So a shorter thread, uh, you have to re-thread it more frequently, but it is less likely to get tangled. My general advice is if this is the first time you're learning how to do this knot, or you don't have like enough space that when you're sewing, you're not gonna like punch someone while you're working, work shorter and the more practice you get on this knot and the other knots, the better you'll be at knots and that seems like a win all around. So that's my advice, take it or leave it according to your personal needs. All right, that was a Cirque du Soleil French knot and hopefully you guys can use this sewing knot as much as I do for like all sorts of different things within your practice. That's it for me today. Feel free to follow my social media. Links are below, Fiberista Nora at Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. If you have requests for things you'd like me to demo, please feel free to leave me a comment or send me an email at fiberistanora at gmail.com. Have a great day. Man, I can't believe I got all the way through that video without a cat. I'm like flabbergasted about this.